Right, so I've given the bike a very good wash and uh, yeah, really gone over it with sponges, toothbrushes, um, in between these sort of lines here, get him with a toothbrush and in here, as you can imagine, there's been a lot of muck and sort of ingress dirt and debris over the years. So let's have a look now, now I've given it a good wash. I've removed the seats, really that was just to get in and uh, flush out anything that was in this tray. I did, there, there isn't, but I did drill a couple of five mil holes in this plastic tray just so any water that gets in there drains out. In most other bikes I've seen there, there are drain holes in these sorts of things for the water to come out. Nice to see the original Yamaha toolkit that goes up in underneath there. Um, so yeah, I've really sort of flushed any, because there was cobwebs and bits of tree and all sorts of stuff that just sort of blew off and found its way in underneath the seats. So let's have a look. So yeah, the bike's looking a whole lot better, just having washed it to be honest. Things I have found whilst I've been doing this, um, there is a, a slight hairline crack down through there, but you can't even see it unless you sort of move that and it's it's in that area there I should get behind that and uh, plastic weld that as you've seen in some of the previous videos as I showed on the um, Triumph panel the welding of that it's, it's straightforward and easy and, and that'll be hidden because the paint's not damaged in any way so that'd be good um, what else have I seen whilst doing this something you may or may not have noticed with this bike it's a bit odd um, there is no remote reservoir on the rear shock. Now, there should be a remote reservoir here, and you have the uh, damping dial in there, the rebound, um, but that isn't, isn't on this bike. So, possibly, I don't think it would have been um, standard without that. I'm pretty sure it would have always had that shock with that remote reservoir but maybe someone changed the shock for this some years after perhaps with a, a better aftermarket shock um, but unfortunately that shock has now had it because it's just corroded too much so that will be going anyway so it doesn't bother me that that's not there but some of you might have looked at that and thought there's a remote reservoir on this bike then didn't, didn't they have them on the very early 93s but it should be there um, other things I've noticed than before, other than stuff being a bit dirty or corroded, things like this, they're, they're solid, they need some oil in there and working, that ooze, but not, not enough, but not a problem, but as you can see the bike really has come up nice, having given it a clean, now you've got some sunlight on there, you can really see the bike's in good condition you know the paintwork is good panels in general are very good um, like I say this is a 93 so it's, it's old but it's in very good condition for that age um, just so you can see these were green and had this horrible black spot in them this is just me cleaning it with a sponge and the back of a sort of half worn Brillo pad sponge thing um, and most of that green and most of that sort of black spotting's come off but I think those will come up lovely those mirrors so the original mirrors you don't get bikes of 10 years of age on sort of some of these older bikes where you still have the original mirrors um, original indicators etc etc bar ends get changed levers get changed people change far too many things off of original bikes um, but this has got a lot of original features which is why I love it one of the things I didn't mention before and you can normally tell if a bike's been down the road had a little prang a little crash somewhere we obviously alluded to this with the indicators um, scratches on the bar ends and the and the lever is people tend to put crash bungs a bit after the event so the horse is bolted and they had a little prang and then they put crash bars crash bungs on after because they don't want it to happen again so sometimes that is a telltale sign to go looking around the bike for accident damage because people tend to put these on after they've had a little crash so always think about that when you're looking at other bikes but yeah there you go um, it's come up very clean very nice 
Um, I haven't really noticed anything untoward. What I'm going to do now is get the hairdryer out and start warming up some of these stickers and remove some of those. And I'll just show you, especially with this screen, some of the things I use. Now, just to show you some of the sort of stuff I have here that I use for cleaning. Um, so we've got this. I've had this now for a long time. It's called Stain Go. It's basically a white paste um, and it's semi gritty so what it will do is it will cut back any plastics any stuff that's um, worn out sun sun sort of uv light destroyed and it will cut back that first layer if you like imagine it being like a 2000 grit wet and dry sandpaper but obviously it's a it's a liquid um, wilkinson do this stuff what scratch now this is slightly less abrasive than this so i tend to use this then this and then go to something like um, tea cut after and then finish up with a, a, a polish so what we're going to do on that screen and you can see that screen now that screen is very opaque so what I'm going to do with that is show you I'll do half polish it and then you'll see what the two halves look like compared to each other and I'll also use that on the mirrors and see how much on the back of the mirrors I can remove um, I think on this bike those headlights are actually glass so on older machines you actually had glass on your headlights rather than plastics polycarbonates so they glass doesn't normally deteriorate over time which is one of the beauties of glass as polycarbonates and things will deteriorate and you need to sort of cut back and maybe even clear coat over the top to get it back to them sort of crystal clear lights um, other thing I noticed on the paintwork here although it looks really nice is somebody seems to have been painting near this bike in a blue paint and it's got like uh, I don't know if you'll see it in, in the camera but it has got um, like a an overpaint, little spots of blue overpaint over the whole surface of the whole bike. Um, you can hear that. That what you can hear really is all the little spots of paint and my finger rubbing on them. So those will take cut off, but it's like a blue overspray. I think you can see it very well there, possibly in that light. I should get those off, but it's sort of peppered with all of that overspray over the whole machine. Um, which obviously spoils the paintwork as a per lesson, but it's, it's yeah, it's kind of over everything. Someone's been spraying with this near it, and it's got over the whole bike. Doesn't look bad from this distance, but me being like I am, I've noticed that, and I shall uh, T cut that off, and it will just disappear. So there we are. I'm going to crack on now with this screen, and I'll show you how I do that in in the sort of two halves, and you know, sort of compare. As I started, I'll come down and compare one side to the other. Let's get on with that now. Now, actually, before we do polish this screen, and I'm, like I say, going to polish one half and show you what one side looks to the other, um, I need to remove this sticker. Now, I use this trusty old hairdryer, which I stole from my daughter. Um, she actually stole it back again, but I've just stolen it back off of her again. Anyway, I'm going to warm this sticker up with this hairdryer. That'll warm up the adhesives underneath and warm the plastic. It'll make it a lot easier for me to peel off without it all breaking up into little pieces. I'll probably tackle this one below here as well on the front fairing. Um, then once I've got the sticker removed, if there's any residue left, I'll clean that off with either panel wipe. If that doesn't work, I'll use some old petrol on a, on a rag. Um, then we can tackle this screen, so I'll get on with that now. Right now, I've just warmed this up, and uh, already it's nice and easy to peel, and I'm just demonstrating having warmed it up, just how easy that is. And there you go. That's that sticker off, just from warming it up. Actually, I've got a lovely clear window now where the stickers protected the screen from the UV light and any wind and rain, etc. And I've got a lovely little oval clear window, so we'll be able to see just how well this will polish up because it will end up being like this. Right now, this sticker, which is the uh, old data tag 
sticker um, was much harder. Um, the one at the top, let's just show you what that window's like now. The one at the top is just a simple, cheap vinyl sticker. It warms up, you get the adhesive warm, and the whole thing just peeled off. Lovely and easy, straight off. This one, which I, like I say is a data tag sticker, it has basically this black adhesive, and over the top was like a clear window and I guess it had data tag printed over the black adhesive with like a clear window over the top. Now it took me what I don't know three or four minutes with the good old trusty thumb now just to pick 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 whilst it was warm and I even used a hairdryer in one hand and picking at the same time kind of cooks your thumb and fingers a bit but it makes it easier as you go. Now what's left here I'm going to try first with a bit of petrol on an old rag and I should break that adhesive down and give it a good rub and then get rid of that. I'll show you how I do that in a second. Right, so old petrol on this rag and uh, what I'm going to do is just rub that in to that adhesive like that and we'll see what happens. And what should happen is the adhesive starts to absorb the fuel and it'll go sort of soft and sticky and as I'm doing this I am sort of using my finger now through the cloth at the same time because as it gets sticky and breaks down I'm kind of scratching it off into the cloth and you can see now that that is beginning to work now obviously you've got to be mindful that you don't and do any damage to any of your paintwork but I do know having tried this before that petrol won't destroy your paintwork as long as you're sort of reasonably quick with it work with it and then rub it off again because it will dissolve as well it will sorry dissolve it'll evaporate in the air So we just have these little bits left now. I'm just going to see if I can get that with my finger now. Because sometimes it has that clear plastic bit on the surface and makes it hard for the fuel to actually get onto the adhesive and break it down. And it does feel more like a sticker now there than it did the uh, adhesive. Give it a, another rub to see if some of the fuel that's left on the rag can pick it up. So there you go, that's uh, just what, a few minutes, a few minutes of hair dryer, bit of petrol, thumbnail, stickers gone, paint works as good as new, and that's two ugly stickers removed and already that looks a million miles better, I think you'll agree. Right, so now what I'm going to do is use this stain go which is basically a UPVC window cleaner. I um, don't know if you can still get this brand. I've had this for quite a few years now. So, what I'm going to do is just apply that straight onto that rag. Don't ever put things on the thing you're going to do, by the way. If you start pulling this on here, it's gonna run down, get into all of these joints here and get where you don't want it to go. Always apply polishes, wax, whatever you want to do onto the rag, then work that in. So look, so I'm gonna try and just stick to half of the screen. Now I'm gonna be careful when I come down here because I could start rubbing this paintwork and I don't want to be doing that. I want to be rubbing the screen. So I'm gonna be a bit cautious and show you just how well this stuff works. Like I say, it's a UPVC cleaner, but the whole idea is you may be able to hear that. The reason you can hear it is because it's got some grit to it and it's polishing. Let's just give that a quick wipe and show you already how that is beginning to clear. Now, I've only just started as you know and it's got very fine scratches from the actual cream but already you can see that that's beginning to clear and that is pretty much opaque. I'll work on this a bit more and it will it'll polish right up. 
Right, so that's just a few minutes of uh, polishing now with the stain go and then following up with that uh, scratch repair stuff that I got from Wilkinson's in, in England here. Um, and I think if I just bring that zoom in, you can really see the massive difference between the two. Absolutely massive. It helps ob obviously with that light shining through from the back there because it really shows you how opaque that is but I haven't even tea cutted that yet and already that looks like a good screen um, a perfectly good screen for this age of vehicle there is a mark here where something's hit the screen originally and it's actually caused like a it's not a crack as such but it is a bit of damage which as much as I've rubbed it, it won't polish out um, I think if you try to polish this out with first sort of abrasive paper it'll be so deep you'll be making the screen too thin this screen is actually a really good quality screen it's very thick it's very robust it's not flimsy like some of the sort of new things that we get and um, that people chuck on after they've sort of decided the, their original screen's no good or they didn't like the clear they want it tinted so I'll also now tea cut this and I'm happy that I've been able to save that original screen on the original bike and that that well that's priceless really isn't it being able to keep the original screen right now just to show you I've just finishing the tea cut on this I've just tea cutted that you can see how clear that is you can maybe make out that mark from from there um, but look how clear that is and that's just three different grades of polish and that's transformed that now it's kind of like one of those adverts where someone shows you some miracle thing and like in two minutes we've transformed this with some miracle polish but actually it does work you know you just need a, a couple of minutes and, and it does work look at this I'll just zoom into this for you that is the stain go and me rubbing the back of that mirror for just a few minutes if it will ever focus and it's what it does is obviously it, it slowly rubs away some of the plastic um, to a degree so you're left without the stain and clear clean plastic underneath now if you did this on paintwork and you kept rubbing with that stain go you'd eventually rub your paintwork through and, and lose your paint so you never want to be too aggressive but, but look at the difference on the back of that mirror for me rubbing that and like I say it is kind of one of those shopping shopping channel products where they convince you that something works within seconds and normally they are lying and it's you know um, there to deceive you but actually with a bit of elbow grease and the right type of product and the right type of thing it can work and it does work and so you don't have to go and buy new mirrors when you see something is filthy and dirty you just use a bit of elbow grease try things first save yourself a lot of money keep the originality of the bike so I'm going to finish polishing the backs of these and then I'll show you just how good they are in a second. So there we are, just a few minutes of polishing. That is with the um, stain go and then finishing off with tea cut. I didn't even use the, the middle sort of paste. It's so even got a little bit of a shine to the back of that mirror now. It's, it's almost completely clean. You can see how good that screen is and the back of the mirror, no spots, no black spots. I'll just walk around and show you what the other one is like still, just to remind you. That's the back of the other mirror, which don't forget has been cleaned. I cleaned that with warm soapy water and sort of rubbed off the green with the back of the scouring pad. So that's fairly clean compared to what we saw it like before. Let's just have a look at the pictures of what it was like before. So there you go, you know, that's been cleaned somewhat, but I'm going to be able to get all of that black spot off and just like the other one, make it completely white. I mean, just, just look at that over there, just check out how white that is. You know, it looks, looks brand new almost. I can, I can carry on cleaning these and they will look brand new. So there we go, it's, it's all it is, elbow grease. And just look at the state of that other half of the screen as well there. So I'll carry on clean this finish this um, but I'll show you some other stuff that will remove um, the stickers on the tank we'll do next so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be uh, removing this nasty thing here always hated um, tank protectors to be honest 
if you wear a, a nice enough jacket and you're not silly enough to have exposed zips that scratch your tank, why would you need one of these? Um, so I'm going to remove this by warming it, warming it up first with the hair dryer as we did with that final sticker and then hopefully it'll peel off nice and gently and we'll see what's underneath. So I'm going to get on with that now, I won't bore you with the warming up process etc and then I'll show you what it's like underneath and hopefully, fingers crossed, It'll be a lovely tank underneath and just a little bit of tea cut and it'll come back to beautiful paint. So let's let's get on with that and then let's have a look. Right, so I'll warm this up, just two minutes, and this horrendous thing just peeled straight off. No hassle whatsoever, no dent, no scratches, nothing hidden under there. So really, really, really good news. Um, sometimes these things are hiding a multitude of sins and that's why someone put it on after. So there it is, um, all the adhesive is now gone. I um, warmed the adhesive up and sort of rolled it off with my thumb, um, just pushing it all the way down and it just kind of come off in like a ball and discarded and no problem at all. Um, a little bit of tea cut, I mean this paint is very clean and this has got that kind of overspray and it's dirty. So when I tea cut around this, ironically I'm taking the dirt off of this getting it back as clean as this this is why you've got this faint line around the outside of that sticker um, I have got very lucky actually because I'll just show you something on the back of the bike you might remember it had the same fake carbon horrible nasty stuff that was on here um, on the back and I thought it was actually bracing the back of the bike and um, covering up a, a crack I'll show you that now with the stuff um, removed so this is the area what I was talking about where the sticker you can just kind of make out the brown that's where the adhesive was on the back of it and it's kind of stained this paintwork I'm confident that'll come off with some tea cut and that'll be gone and this isn't a crack this is the two half side panels that are screwed together there's no crack there's no damage underneath this this is all just adhesive again um, so yeah that's that's really good news that that is also not damaged in any way and that and the tank are in pristine condition so absolutely brilliant right so there we have it for the first day i've spent about three or four hours now peeling off stickers and polishing and cleaning etc etc but uh yeah subscribe to my channel and you'll see the development of this bike as we come along there'll be a series of yzf 750r videos dedicated to this bike alone so you can see the development of just tidying it up spray painting a few parts such as the stay here will need spray painting replacement of parts there'll be the servicing so there'll be the oil changing um, chain uh, the wheels being sprayed um, plugs being changed etc etc so quite a few videos to come just for this very bike alone so if you're interested in the yzf 750r and in particular this 1993 model then please stay tuned to Dino's Garage and like I say there will be a whole series of videos for you to subscribe to and view in your own pleasure in your own time. Thanks very much for watching.